Namaste, yogis. Thank you for joining me today. Before we move on to our practice, let me share a little story with you today. About two weeks ago, I went to the grocery store and bought an organic iceberg lettuce. And as it was about gone, there was a core that was left. So I decided, oh, I'll plant this core. That was about two weeks ago. And today it looks like this. So it's a nice little indoor project if you're locked up inside with nothing else to do. It's a nice little project for yourself or maybe even for your kids. It will teach them that some of the foods that we eat are actually alive. And this project doesn't cost anything. As a matter of fact, you'll save money because you're growing maybe a second or third lettuce from the price of one plant. So it's it has that benefit as well also when you buy lettuce at the store it comes with this wrapping which um one wrapping is really not a big deal but um, it does fill the landfill so by growing your own lettuce like this imagine if a million people did it that just one lettuce a year that would reduce the landfill by a million of these uh plastics so if you'd like to try it for yourself, first you need to go to the store and find a nice lettuce. Now I buy this one, uh, this organic lettuce, find one that looks really healthy and that has this core on it. So you can eat the rest or just cut it off and then stick this part with the bottom down into the water and uh, place it next to a sunny window. And you might see leaves start coming out in about just a few days. After about two or three weeks, this is the one I showed you was two weeks, you can leave it in here a little longer or you can plant it in a pot or if it's warm outdoors, you can even plant it in the soil directly. Now you can also do this with celery and cabbage. Also, um, green onion, if it has roots on, you can do it. I tried it with carrots one year. Carrots and beets, uh, they have, if you buy the ones with leaves on them, you cut them right to where there's a little piece of the flesh left and plant them in water, and that'll get them started. The only thing is, for carrots and beets, the first year, you will only get leaves and seeds. So if you're happy with eating leaves or getting seeds, that's what will grow the first year. And you take those seeds and plant them. And the second year, you can grow your own plants outdoors. But it's a two-year process for carrots and beets. So it's very interesting. Nature is really fascinating when you think about it, isn't it? Now we will begin our practice. Bring your hand in Namaste. Om Sahana Vavatu Sahana Bunaktu Sahaviryam Karavavahai Tejasvinavati Tamastu Mavidvishavahai Om Shanti 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 Today's talk is about Brahmacharya, one of the yamas or restraints of yoga. Brahmacharya is often translated as continence or celibacy. And that is why many people associate it with sexual abstinence. Actually, there is a lot more to brahmacharya. The word brahmacharya comes from a combination of two Sanskrit words, brahma and charya. The word brahma means ultimate truth or divinity or God. And charya means path or conduct. So when you put these two words together, a more correct translation would be something like a path to divine truth or a conduct in accordance with God's will. Let us take a look at what the Yoga Sutras say about Brahmacharya. 
when firmly established in the awareness of the highest reality, then a great strength, capacity, or vitality is acquired. There are two parts to the human being, the physical animalistic body and the divine existence called the soul. Our human body has instincts like other animals, such as the need to eat, sleep, and procreate. And many human beings live their lives like animals. That is, they seek to eat, sleep, and procreate with no other purpose. They live their lives constantly interacting and reacting to their outside world. In yoga, we teach that there is a better way for us human beings to live and that we need to focus more inward instead of outward. And brahmacharya is one of those practices that helps us overcome our animalistic instincts and live to a higher purpose. So how do we practice brahmacharya? Many cultures and religions use different practices such as meditation, um, intense prayer, uh, fasting, sleep deprivation. There are even some who meditate while sitting under a waterfall. Um, there are practices that people sit for hours without sleep or food and chanting mantras. There are practices where people uh, push their body to near death to try and overcome the bodily needs. In India, there are yogis who raise one arm for a period of years until their shoulder freezes in that position. There are also yogis who bind their legs together so they're unable to walk. They have to crawl around. Or there are yogis who don't talk for years at a time. And by doing these intense practices, they try to overcome their body. We must be honest of our reasons to take on a practice. Many people try to fool themselves. When a yogi tries to expand their consciousness, they, they should not try to expand it in order to control their physical desires, but the other way around. They should try and control their physical desires to expand their consciousness. A person who constantly strives to attain the truth, or God consciousness, loses interest in sensory pleasures or sensory stimulation. Uh, that means persons who are at a higher level of consciousness have no interest in performing severe austerities, such as the ones mentioned earlier. And it could be right for the person at that time, but it is, is, it is no indication that that person is highly evolved. Um, even somebody who has done many years of practice still has to eat, drink, and sleep. So they will continue doing so. It's just that they do not seek extremes in either direction whether overindulgence or uh, self-deprivation. There's a famous Zen quote, uh, before enlightenment, chop wood, carry water. After enlightenment, chop wood, carry water. This is kind of the essence of the message. When somebody attains enlightenment, their actions do not change. They must still do chores like everyone else. The outward appearance may look the same, but what has changed is what is inside. It is their level of consciousness. We hear many stories of priests and other religious heads sexually abusing children around the world. This just proves that just because someone attains a high level in a church or religious organization does not mean that they have learned to control their desires. Imagine this scenario. There is a mother and a child and the mother has this cookie jar that she places on the table and tells her child, 
do not eat these cookies. So the child, of course, wants to eat them, but he doesn't. And the reason he doesn't is not because he thinks it is wrong to eat them, but because he'll get in trouble if he eats them. So while mom is there, of course, he will not touch those cookies. But if mom were not there, his temptation may become so strong that he will end up eating the cookies. Many priests do not abuse children, not for the reason that they think it is morally wrong, but for the reason that they do not want to get caught and punished. And that is why when mom is not around, they will be like the child who cannot resist the temptation to have a cookie. So when no one else is watching, they will yield to their temptation. A person who manages to suppress their desires is not somebody of a higher consciousness. How could anyone who abides in ultimate truth even be tempted by such physical desires? To attain brahmacharya, we must strive to abide in the ultimate truth for every minute of the day. You can call it God consciousness or Krishna consciousness or Christ consciousness, whatever you may call it. The actual method you choose is up to you. As in the practice of ahimsa or asteya, the goal is not to perfect brahmacharya, but to use it as a tool to expand our consciousness. And now let us begin our practice. Okay, we'll start today with arms up and down. Inhale, arms up, come to your tiptoes. Exhale, down. Inhale, up and tiptoes. Exhale, down. Do about 10 total at your own pace. Inhaling as you extend your arms up and exhaling as you come down. You can try it with your eyes closed if you like. Do about one more and relax when you're done. For the next pose, we'll extend both of our arms up and bring the opposite elbow and knee to meet in the front. We'll start with the left elbow and right knee. Inhale, exhale, bring the uh, left elbow and right knee together. Inhale, stretch up and switch sides. Inhale, stretch up, switch sides. Inhale, stretch up, and switch sides. That was about two of them, so do about 10 total to each side. Getting your left brain and right brain to work together to accomplish a task. Relax when you're done. We'll do one more left brain, right brain coordination exercise. Stand with your feet wide apart. Extend your arms out to your side. Fingers pointing outward. Inhale and take your right hand to your left foot with your exhale. Inhale, slowly come up. Exhale, take your left hand to your right foot. Inhale, come up. Do about nine more, total of about ten to each side. Inhale as you come up. And exhale as you bend down. If you want to be a little more 
precise with your movements, work on the balance a little deeper, then you can, for example, take your left index finger to your right big toe when you bend over. Be a little more precise with the movement. And of course, you always can close your eyes. They say this movement is good for uh, autistic children to help with their brain coordination. Try one more to each side. And when you're done, release. Take a little break. So today we're going to use a strap in our practice. I have this standard yoga strap. If you don't have a strap, you can use something like a, a bathrobe a belt or a suitcase strap. Try to find something uh, a little sturdy. So not something that stretches, but something kind of sturdy. And um, so you can grab one if you have one. And we'll start uh, with a stretch using the strap. Mine is kind of long, so I'm folding it in half. If yours is shorter, you can use it single layer. Uh, so we'll stand holding the strap about shoulder width or slightly wider and with our inhale we'll raise the arms and we'll hold it here so you stretch upwards and push outwards at the same time feel some tension in your arms and just let your head fall back close your eyes if possible and relax Take a deep inhale and exhale, bend to your right, straight to the side. If you're leaning against the wall as you do the pose, try to kind of twist slightly upward and look upward. That'll help you stay in the right position and get a little deeper stretch. center we'll go straight into the other side exhale bend to your left this time slightly twisting upward and looking towards the ceiling slowly come back to the center exhale lower your arms you can relax move around your shoulders if you'd like next one is one of my favorite shoulder exercises it helps improve posture by keeping your shoulders back and keeping your back straight upper back straight so what we'll do we'll take the straps behind our back so it comes right underneath the arm and cross it in front, make an X. So you switch hands and you make this X and then you take your head under the X and pull it, adjust it if you need to. And then inhale and exhale, let your head fall back, pull on the straps. Some people could extend their elbows here if you have a longer strap or your elbows can be bent. Make it feel good. It should feel really good. Take a few deep breaths. And 
inhale and exhale remove the strap there's a lot of things you can do with this strap so it's a nice thing to have you don't actually have to go out and buy one so just find whatever you have at home and uh, use it as support so we'll do another pose using the strap we'll do a standing balance pose so hook the strap on your right foot again like usual if you need to hang on to a wall or a chair or a table anything for support please do so hang on with your left hand we'll do the right leg first so hold the strap with your right hand or both hands and slowly bring your right foot up as high as you like to go today it can just be a couple inches and hold it here now if you're not using support you can have your left hand out to the side or up to the sky or on your waist whatever feels good today stare at an unmoving point and use your breath to stabilize the pose we'll add a little extra today if you like to lower your right leg first you can lower it to the mat take a break in between otherwise if available we're going to swing that right leg out to the right side looking straight or for a little extra challenge you can look to the right and again use your breath to stabilize the pose slowly bring your right leg back to the center regain your balance and then release good not an easy pose you did great we'll do the other side so next when you're ready we'll hook the strap on your left foot if you need support take it with your right hand and when you're ready either with one hand or both hand raise your left leg forward as high as you like to go and adjust your right arm position as you like make it work for you And next you can lower your left leg if necessary or if you'd like to challenge yourself just slowly swing your left leg out to the left side holding it there or to add a little more difficulty you can look towards your right slowly with control return to the center regain your balance and then release not an easy pose so just if it was too difficult just keep practicing it does get easier so set aside your strap for now we're going to do a pose called goddess pose stand with your feet wide apart bend your knees today we'll have the arms out to the side the things to watch out for in this pose is that your elbows are going to want to sag after a while try to keep your upper arms parallel to the floor and keep your fingers spread wide open and if you want to challenge yourself you can bend your knees up to 90 degrees makes it a lot more difficult and again if you like to work on your balance at the same time you can close your eyes you can also pull in your stomach muscles and tuck in your tailbone working on the, the stomach and pelvic muscles at the same time breathe deeply and relax
Okay, inhale, slowly stretch up, arms up, and exhale, release. Take a break. Let's do one more standing pose. We'll interlace the hands behind the back. Another shoulder opener. So when you're ready, open your chest to inhale. Let your head fall back, looking up to the ceiling. Feeling a nice stretch on the front side of your body. Inhale and exhale, fold forward. Knees can be bent or straight. Arms can be up in the air or sitting on your back, if that works better for you, and fold forward. Inhale, slowly come back up and exhale release good job so now we'll come down to the mat let's come to table pose so we'll start by stepping the right foot between the hands slightly towards your right side and let's stretch the left arm forward so reach as far as you can the arm parallel to the floor looking downward slightly forward keeping the neck relaxed if you feel like you want to try a little more difficult version you can bring the left toes onto the mat and raise the left knee So now we're going to spin open with your inhale take that left arm up to the sky and look upward again the left knee can be on the mat or the left knee can be up so you don't have to do the most difficult thing just do something that works for you today you don't want it to be too difficult that you're going to give up Inhale and exhale, bring your left hand to the mat and step back with your right foot into table pose. Now we'll switch sides, we'll step the left foot between the hands, slightly towards the left hand side. And first we'll extend the right arm forward, reaching as far forward as you can, like you're drowning in somebody's there's a boat there and you want to help. You're reaching out for help. Spreading the fingers wide apart. If you want a, an extra challenge, you can raise your right knee. We'll inhale and spin open take the right arm up to the sky again the right knee can be on the mat or raised and hold it there looking upwards eyes can be opened or closed Inhale and 
exhale, bring your right hand to the mat, step your left foot back, relax in table pose, and let's take a little break in case somebody needs it. Extend your arms forward, spread your knees apart into Balasana, or child's pose. And slowly push yourself back up. Then go ahead, sit on the mat with your legs extended. I'm going to show a pose today called Marichyasana. Now without a strap, this pose is uh, too difficult for a lot of people. So we will do the strap version today. And of course, if you don't need a strap, you're welcome to um, do it without a strap. So what we will do, this pose, first I'll show what it looks like without a strap. So we bend one of the knees and we try to bring the hands together behind us. But many people cannot, they'll say that looks ridiculous and that's fine. It is for some people, they're not at that point. So no worries, this is where your strap helps out. So just place your strap behind you. So your left knee is bent to start, your right leg is extended with the toes pointed up and extend your left arm forward, pushing as far as you can, at the same time trying to pulling, pull your left knee in as close to the body as you can, and hook your left arm around the left knee. And grab the strap with your left hand, and then hopefully you could find it, grab the strap with your right hand, and then bring your head towards your right knee. And just stay there and relax. Take a few deep breaths. So the strap, there's many uses for the strap. It's a nice tool to have in yoga. Feel free to use it even if I'm not showing a modification, if you feel that you know of a modification, something that will work better for you, you can always use your strap. Inhale, slowly release. Extend your left leg forward. Move around if you like. So we'll switch sides. Uh, bend your right knee, bring the foot close to your body. So again, if you're using the strap, set it behind your back in a place that you can easily access it. Left foot, toes point up. Reach forward with your right hand as far forward as you can. Pull the right knee in towards your body. Hook the right arm around the right knee and either grab the hand if you're more flexible or grab the strap if you're working to get there. And hold the pose, look straight down and bring your face towards your left knee. I see people come to yoga class sometimes and when they do the poses, they look like they're really suffering. They're they're biting down their teeth, cringing like they're biting into a lemon. And yoga is supposed to be fun. You're not supposed to suffer when you do yoga. If you feel like it's too much, always back off or make your own modifications and try to find some pleasure in the pose. Inhale, release. Exhale, extend your right leg forward. Take a little break. So next we'll do a pose called Boat Pose. This is also, um, some people find this pose difficult without a strap. So we're going to do the easy version today. We'll use our strap. I have um, the long one so I'll fold mine in half, but if you have a short one just use a single layer. So the full, let me demonstrate the full Boat Pose. The full Boat Pose, we have the legs up, back straight, either here or the feet up. But if this is too difficult to hold, if you want to do this version, of course, you're welcome to do it. 
but I will demonstrate the strap version today. So do whichever you would like today and we'll hold it for a while. So um, just be prepared for that. So if you're using the strap, hook it around both feet with your knees bent. Um, let's try to straighten the back first because a lot of people, they start with the back rounded and it never gets straight. So we'll straighten the back first and try to hold your back straight. And then when you're ready, we'll raise the legs with the exhale. So inhale and exhale, extend your legs up. Your back is still straight. So your body is in like a, a V shape. And just hold it here. It's a lot easier to hold when you're using this strap. So if anyone wants to try the boat pose just for a little while, you can release your hands but try not to let the pose collapse. So just let go of your hands and do about five seconds. One, two, three, four, five, and then release, fold forward, stretch out your back. Okay, great. So now we'll come into, uh, this pose is called Gomukasana. One more pose that we will use the strap with. There are, again, different versions of this. The traditional one is with the knees stacked up one on top of the other. Let's start with the right knee on top. And if you can stack your knees perfectly, that's great. If you can't, if they're only part of the way, or if it's too much, you have issues, just keep your knees in a comfortable position. And I think you might want to fold your strap in this one. If you don't have a strap, you can use a towel for this one. So I'm going to turn around so that you can see me. So we have the right knee on top, so we'll grab the strap with the left hand and swing it around the back. Now some of you, when you reach back, you may easily grab your hand behind your back, your other hand. If you can, you don't really need the strap. You can just hold your hand and hold it here. For those of us who cannot do that yet, and yet is the key word, we will hold the strap with the left hand, reach back with the right hand, and go as far up as you can with your right hand. Make the strap as short as you can in between your hands, and just hold it here. And relax. So there's no need to worry about not doing it good enough or overdoing it. Just go as far as you can. That's the beauty of yoga. Just hold it there, close your eyes, take a few deep breaths. Notice, we'll do both sides, so notice the difference between your left and right sides. Shake it out. And we'll do the other side. So when you're ready, switch your legs. If you're stacking the knees, this time the left knee is on top. Try to get them as nicely stacked as you can or anywhere in between, maybe partially or just in the sukhasana or even your feet forward if you have knee issues. So this time we'll hold the strap with the right hand. Swing it behind the back, reach back with your left hand, walk your hands as close together as you can get them, or if you can reach your other hand without the strap, you can grab the other hand and just hold it there. Relax and feel a nice stretch, a real nice stretch for the shoulders.
Inhale and exhale, release, move around, release the pose. One more good pose for the strap is we can turn sideways, we'll extend the legs out, but some people cannot fold completely. So instead of bending the knees, you can have a strap around your feet and bend forward. So let's do that together. Again, uh, fold your strap in half. Uh, hook them around your feet. I like to stretch up first. So we'll stretch up. Just set the strap there. And when you're ready, inhale. Reach up with your arms. Stretch upward. Get your spine as long as you can. And then exhale. Slowly push outwards as you fold forward. And if you need the strap, grab the strap. If you can grab your feet without bending the knees, that's fine too and bring your head toward your knees. Inhale, slowly come back up, and exhale, relax. We'll do one more pose, one more seated pose. Come to a comfortable seat, seated position uh, on your blanket if you like, or a cushion, or however you like to sit. And we'll do some neck stretches. Hands on your knees, point your chin up to the sky, and look up. Bring your chin towards your chest, stretch the back side of the neck. Exhale, come back to the center. Exhale, tilt the neck to the right. If you like a little deeper stretch, place your right hand on the head and gently press down. Switch sides. Tilt the head to the left. Place the left hand on the head if you like and gently press down. And hold. Just relax. relax come back to the center and let's do five head circles in each direction so lean your head back and make five slow big circles we did some neck exercises so hopefully it feels a little smoother than um, normal or like when you just get up in the morning Five in one direction and then switch directions. Okay, let's lie down on the mat face up. You can have a pillow under your head.
we're going to do a side twist position. So bend your knees, bring your heels close to your hips, and we'll open the arms out to the side in a T position. And today we can keep, let's keep the feet together today. This is a little different version. So lower your knees to the right and turn your head to the left and relax. For those of you who would like to know the Sanskrit name, it's called Supta Paribhattanasana. Slowly bring your knees and head back to the center. And we'll switch sides. Lower the knees to the left, turn your head to the right. Exhale, come back to the center. Let's do some knee circles. So hands on your knees and do 10 knee circles in each direction. This is not only for the knees, actually it's more for the lower back. Nice lower back stretch. Nice pose for people with sciatica or back issues. After about 10 in each direction, we'll get up. So fall to your right side, raise your right arm, place your left hand in front of your chest, and using both hands, push yourself to a seated position. So today we're going to do a breathing technique called alternate nostril breathing. There are many ways that this is taught, like a lot of different yoga postures. And in fact, this breath has many different names. It has been called um, Nadi Shuddhi Pranayama, or Nadi Shodana, or Anuloma Viloma, which means the moon and sun breath. So many names and many ways of doing it. I will show you the way that I was taught. So if you know any variations, you can do your version or just follow me. We use the hands. This is called Nasika Mudra. This is the position I was taught. And some people use the, the two uh, fingers extended, but I was taught with them bent. And we plug the right nostril with the right thumb and the left nostril with the right uh, ring finger. If you're left-handed, you can do it with your left hand. And if you're following my version, we do it with the eyes closed and mouth closed. We take a deep inhale from the left to begin. Then we switch, open the right nostril and exhale from the right. Then we inhale from the right. And we switch and exhale from the left. So we'll do this together. As you get used to it, if you're new to this, Try to make your breath as smooth as possible. And um, you, your mouth will be closed. You might feel that one nostril feels a little more clogged than the other. That is normal. Uh, they say that every 60 to 90 minutes, our dominant nostril changes. And that's how our body uh, regulates itself. It balances itself. The time you spend breathing from your left and right nostrils should be equal. but 
time goes on, our body gets out of balance and one nostril may become more dominant and that throws off the equilibrium in our system and it's said to create more diseases. So this helps balance the right and left energies inside our body. So we'll try together, just go at your own pace. Hands in Nasika Mudra, right hand, if you're right hand, use your right hand. And close your eyes, close your mouth, plug your right nostril with your right thumb, and inhale from the left, plug the left, exhale from the right, inhale from the right, plug the right, exhale from the left, inhale from the left, plug the left, exhale from the right. Inhale from the right, plug the right, exhale from the left. So continue at your own pace. Your exhale and inhale are the same side and you switch during the inhale, after the inhale. We'll do this for about five minutes, so continue at your own pace.
Let's do one more to each side and in the practice. calming breath. We are going to take Shavasana now. If you'd like to continue this breath in your Shavasana, it's a little more advanced practice, but you can try on your own just without using your hands. Uh, imagine inhaling from the right nostril, exhaling from the left, inhaling from the left, exhaling from the right. So alternately exhaling and inhaling from your nostrils, just imagining it happen. It doesn't necessarily have to be happening, but just imagine it in the beginning. So we'll take our Shavasana. I will not record it, so just lie down on the mat face up with your hands, palms facing up, feet slightly apart. If there's any jewelry or head accessories, glasses, anything you like to remove to get comfortable, that is fine. So take Shavasana as long as you feel like it. When you feel ready, you can start moving your fingers and toes, doing a few stretches maybe, and then come to a seated position and we'll end our practice with our final chant. enjoyed today's practice and if you have any tips for gardening or anything else that you'd like to share with others something that they can do at home during the winter months or a little project that you have been doing and you have been successful with please share it in the comments section I would really love to hear from you so we will end our practice now bring your hands in namaste and close your eyes or watch the screen and chant with me. Om Sarve Bhavantu Sukhinaha Sarve Santu Niramaya Sarve Bhadrani Pashantu Ma Kaschik Dukkha Bhag Bhavet Om Shanti 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 I thank you for joining me today. Namaste.